for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a tips video for you guys today. A passing tips video. That's right. Something that I put out every year. I'm going to give you guys a full breakdown of all the things you can do in the passing game. Whether it's pass protection, audibles, uh, types of augmented throws you can make, types of augmented catches you can make. Basically, everything you need to know about passing in Madden 22. Uh, whether you're new to the game or whether you've been playing it for a while, there might be a lot of things that you don't know you can do in this game. And I'm going to go over all that in today's video. Now, if you guys want to see more videos, videos like this like I can do a defensive version which I'm planning on Woo! hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that's going to get right into the video now the first thing I'm going to go over is pre-snap adjustments I'm not going to go over coverages I did an entire breakdown video of that if you guys want to see that I'll have a link in the description it's how to read and beat every single defense trust me that video is just as important as this one if not more important so I'll have a link in the description for that but first I'm going to go over uh, just some adjustments you can make pre-snap so we're just going to take a random player we're going to go with the Z spot now before I get this video as always this video is brought with my coin sponsor at AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support my channel at the same time, all you have to do is click the link below. First line of the description is discount code money to get 3% off. It's already some of the cheapest coins on the market. So appreciate everybody that does that. You guys really help me out when you guys buy coins through my provider. Now, there's really two types of adjustments you can make. If you push in the right click button or the R3 button, whatever you want to call it, it's just pushing in the right stick. Uh, you bring up a, uh, a number of different adjustments you can make. You should know how to audible plays. That's really simple. All you have to do is hit the X button and you have a series of plays here through different formations. I mean, you can rotate into all types of different formations if you guys don't know that. You don't have to just be in the one formation that you're in. You can go through several passing formations and I feel like you can do even more this year. So that's something and that's obviously really important. So all you have to do to do that, X on um, on Xbox or I think it's Square on PlayStation, although I'm not on PlayStation right now. So that's obviously really important. The hot routes is next. If you watch any of my money play videos and you're not comfortable making hot routes, it's really going to be hard to maximize uh, the plays that I create because ultimately you pretty much always have to hot route somebody. So your hot route adjustments, all you have to do is hit Y or triangle, then you select whatever receiver it is that you're trying to adjust. In this scenario, if I were to be running a spot play, I'd probably want to put the B route here on a streak. Uh, and that's really all you have to do. Once you select the B route, you just basically follow the prompt commands on the screen. It's really that simple right in front of you. So, I mean, they're going to change based off of whether it's running back, tight end, or receiver. It's also going to change based off of where the receiver is. But it's ultimately uh, something that you have to know how to do. Now, those are things I'm going to take for granted that most people know how to do. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the line adjustments. The line adjustments is probably the most important. So you can see right here, if you hit the left bumper or L1 on PlayStation, you have the option to either max protect which means that your tight end and your running backs are typically going to go into pass protection. I typically find that sliding the protection works best when it comes to uh, what side your running back or your tight end is on or whoever's blocking. Now, Hilaire's on a check and release, but if I slide my protection to the right, he's going to stay home, and then you can see we basically pick up all the blitzes. If I slide to the left, it doesn't make too much of a difference because there's no running back over there. Now, Max Protect obviously is just going to give you some additional pass blockers, and then double teaming is really best used used against a real dominant, you know, defensive player, whether it's Aaron Donald or, you know, JJ Watt, somebody like that. If you have a really dominant defensive player, you typically want to double team them. And then you'll notice that the, uh, you know, you basically to do that, by the way, I didn't really mention, you have to hit the LB once again, hit down the right stick, and then you have to move around until you choose which defensive player you want to double team. So like I said, if we have a dominant defensive end, I'm going to choose somebody like, like this guy here, it really doesn't matter. And then we're basically just going to see how, you know, they're going to have more than one guy double team that player. As you can see, right there they i have to go to the replay just to show that but you can see right there they double teamed him and they knocked him over so let's go and let's go to the replay just to show you this is the effect that double teaming can have on somebody if somebody's really getting the best of you both of these guys will basically i mean the entire offensive philosophy changes and then these guys both just come over and just slam this guy to the ground so if you have somebody really overpowered that you're playing against like a khalil mack or tj watt something like that you might have to do that every single play against a player like that so that's pretty much it for protection calls the last thing is id the mic which is exactly the same way uh that you know double team it so if somebody coming in off the blitz a lot and not getting picked up you can basically just hit a then you have to go around until you find that player and then basically you know hit a again 
to ID that person. So that's basically all that's gonna do. The two best ways to give the most pass protection in Madden 22, in my opinion, are sliding left or right uh, and double teaming. Now, once the play starts, there's a number of things that you can do to extend the play. Things like playmaking, which still surprises me that a lot of people don't really know how to do. Playmaking is simply just holding the right stick in a direction to basically control the closest uh, player on the field, the closest player to the quarterback. A lot of times it'll be a running back, sometimes it'll be a drag. Let's go ahead and let's watch a replay here. I had to put this running back out on a pattern, but you see that once he comes through the line of scrimmage, he's out in the flat and there's nobody there. So I could throw the ball to him right now, or I could playmaker him up the field to try to get him up the field to get a little bit more uh, catch and run, a little more momentum before I start to throw. In a man coverage, this might get him wide open. He might be covered completely until I do this playmakering, but ultimately holding the right stick in whatever direction I want, up, left, right, it's going to change the direction that he's running his pattern. Now, obviously, you want to do it a little bit earlier before it gets to the sideline too, but you can see the effectfulness this could have, especially if a user is covering this running back. You do the exact same thing. Like I said, I can just go ahead and play maker him up the field. See ya. And now you can see, I mean, I'm going to get a much bigger gain than if I would have just took the drag and tried to catch and run. If you have a mobile quarterback also, a lot of times playmakering uh, with the closest receiver can get the defender to follow. So that'll give you an opportunity to run. So that's something to think about that when you're running with a mobile quarterback, playmaking a receiver up and away a lot of times will take the defender away until you cross the line of scrimmage. You can also throw the ball away by pushing the R3 button in. Nope. If there's nothing open, don't throw an interception, just chuck it out of bounds. You can do that from in the pocket also. Nope. And you'll basically just chuck it to a point where, you know, it's past the line of scrimmage, it's not a penalty. So in, in previous years past, you may have gotten a penalty, but now you can basically chuck it out of bounds from inside the pocket a lot of times. So just make sure nope. you know, if you don't have it, just, just if the play's not there, don't force it, don't throw interceptions, just push in the right, the right click and throw the ball away. It's a very savvy veteran move. Another thing you can do is pump fake. Pump faking is something where Fight. if you basically press any, any button uh, twice, it will basically cancel the throw if you press it immediately. Like think of it like a double clicking a mouse. You basically have to hit that button twice. And it doesn't matter what button it is either. Like right here, you hit that A button, basically pump fake away any defender. Typically that's gonna work best against a user because you can see it brings up an icon, but you have to, you have to be quick because a lot of times, you know, it, it looks like Psych! Like like the ball's going right there, and maybe it'll force the user to follow the the landing spot on the field rather than where you're going to throw the ball. So pump faking can be helpful. I just find you don't necessarily always have enough time to do that. When it comes to the types of passes that you can throw, there's really only three, and I always consider two of them major. One of them very minor. I don't think that a lot or a touch pass is ever something that you're really going to have to do. Like that's a touch pass right there because you can see it doesn't really have a lot of usefulness. Maybe against like certain types of uh, defenses, maybe or certain types of coverages. Like I'll try to throw a touch pass to uh, to the RB out there, and that was more of a lob anyway. So to me, a touch pass is probably the most uh, or the least used. Um, but you have the, the most important is probably going to be a bullet pass. A bullet pass, that's how you basically squeeze in these throws in between zone coverages. Typically, to beat zone, you're going to have to bullet pass. To beat man coverage, a lot of different man coverages, you're going to want a lob. But when it comes to um, getting the ball out on, on a spot as quick as possible, I would say that the most important pass is going to be a bullet pass. And how to bullet pass is really easy. All you have to do is hold the receiving icon down uh, basically throughout the entire throw. If you hold it down, it's going to zip it in there as quick as possible. A lob pass would be something you would do to beat man coverage. Something like here, if I want to try to use my speed to get past this guy here, I basically just tap it, throw it up, and then you can see I can switch over and try to uh, out sprint the, def or the defender. So that's going to be one of the few opportunities where it's really going to be best to throw up a lob. And like I say, you can tap it, whatever the icon is. So the B button here, just tap it, switch over, and outrun your cornerback. And that's going to be one of the best opportunities. Typically you're going to be using uh, bullet passing 90% of the time, like if I want to throw to these short routes here, that's going to be your best bet. But you also have a lot of opportunities if you get a deep ball to throw up a lob pass where it's going to be a much better play. A lot of times if, you, if I try to bullet to that B route here, it's going to be an interception, as you can see right here. You have to lob it up on um, plays like that. You can also change the trajectory of a throw, whether you want to be high or low. That will come in handy on a play like this. Like I'm running against a cover two man right now, and all I'm really going to do is want to throw this low so I can get it away from the safety. So you can see right there, we have success once he beats him off the line. To do 
that, all you really have to do is hold the left trigger or the L2 button. We'll go to the replay just to show you how this guy here will basically uh, drop to the ground immediately for those low throws and basically get down. This is also helpful if the defender uh, was bearing down on a player and you know in a position to basically hit them and knock the ball free. So against certain coverages, low throwing is going to be best. A lot of times against man coverage, a lot of times in the red zone, stuff like that. Um, you just have to hold the left trigger or the L2 button if you're on PlayStation. You could also throw a high throw, which to me is a little less effective because they nerfed it so much but all you have to do is hold the left bumper and you can see how you can throw it up high to change the tra trajectory of the pass that to me is only really important because a lot of times users will expect the ball to go to a certain spot and throwing a high pass can change that but to me they nerfed it so much it's not necessarily it's one of the lesser used ones that you're going to have to use there's different types of catches you can make too. I didn't mention you could also cancel the play action by hitting the right trigger. But there's different types of catches you can make as well. Things like secure catches, which you can see right there, uh, make a big difference when it comes to catching balls on the sideline. To do that, all you really have to do is hit the A or X button uh, and just basically catches it and it'll go down immediately, which takes away any opportunity from the computer or the user to basically just blast them and knock the ball free. So that's something that to me is probably my most used catch animations you can see right there it doesn't matter if anybody's around nothing triggers it all you have to do is hit the a button or the x button if you're on playstation and you will immediately get down to secure the catch safe catching is probably the best but you also have an aggressive catch function uh, which is basically just wide triangle when the ball's in the air. I don't really find that it's too successful. I, I think that even with a big tight end like Travis Kelsey, it just doesn't come down too very often with the ball. But if you make a mistake and you throw the ball up into a crowd or you put up a bad ball, you gotta go up and try to aggressive catch it, as you can see right there. It doesn't typically happen but it's your best chance of defending the ball. A lot of times you won't even necessarily have to catch the aggressive catch Got as long as like right there, we've come down to the aggressive catch. You don't always have to catch it to make uh, a play. A lot of times it'll just defend the ball from the user or the computer catching the ball, which to me is good enough. And then last but not least, you have the catch and run, which is used to be called rat catch. That's basically going to be um, the X button, as you can see right there. It gives me a little bit of a speed boost going into the catch. Uh, and you can see it's, a, it's one of the better ways to, to basically turn up field and get the most yards after the catch. Let's go and let's do that again. Like I said, this is something that, um, you know, like I said, they, took, they, they used to call it a rat catch. Now it's just called a catch and run. This is probably one of the most used ones as well. As you can see, I mean, it just really gives me an opportunity to just get some extra yards as you're already pretty much accelerated by the time you catch the ball. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more uh, tip videos, more offensive or defensive videos, I can do a defensive tip video as well about the type of functions and adjustments you can do pre-snap and during the play. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.